And that's probably our, our five minutes. People yep. can join us as we get going if, um, if they'd like to. So we're a small group, but that's very nice. Thank you very much for coming along this morning. Um, Elizabeth and I just want to start by respectfully acknowledging the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation, who are the traditional owners of the land on which we meet. And we pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Today's theme is caring for yourself, self-care or how to live well with dementia. So I'm going to open with a question for Elizabeth. Elizabeth, if I've just received a dementia diagnosis and I feel really flat, maybe even depressed, do you have any advice for me? Yeah, look, I think a, a diagnosis of dementia is life altering and it's absolutely normal to feel shocked and grief stricken. Um, but there are many supports out there to help uh, in both finding useful information, linking into support groups and sourcing funding. And there's also services like counselling to help work through your feelings of grief and distress. So it's really important to connect with people um, and ideally bringing your family and friends along for the ride. So as you learn what information is helpful and what types of supports you'd like to access, it's really good to have both formal and informal supports to make life a little bit happier and to sustain you living independently for longer. Thank you. I feel like sometimes there's a stigma um, associated with having a diagnosis of, of dementia that isn't there with a diagnosis of other, other diseases. Is there anything I can do to maintain my sense of, of self? <laughs> Yeah, look, I think it's really important to um, promote that dementia doesn't change who you are. So the best advice that I can suggest to people is to focus on your strengths and capabilities rather than deficits. So having dementia doesn't mean that you have to stop doing the things that you love and enjoy. Um, it might just mean doing things a little bit differently or accessing some supports to be able to continue to engage in those things. Um. Often people say that uh, a, a dementia diagnosis is, is, you know, the end. Is there any way I can continue to live alone and maintain my independence after receiving a dementia diagnosis? Absolutely, yes, yes. And this is what most formal services are aimed at achieving. So if things become more difficult as dementia progresses, there are a range of support strategies and things like memory cues, wayfinding aids, signage and prints to maintain your daily routine. Um, there's some really simple things in there as well, like writing notes or post-its to yourself each day, having a calendar, um, things like dementia clocks that can have an audio base and, and prompt you on time and appointments and things like that. Um, so many people living with dementia live alone and they adapt their environment or adopt different strategies um, and techniques to keep them uh, on track and to make their life easier. So a dementia diagnosis doesn't mean having to give up life as you know it. Well, that's positive news. Elizabeth, I've heard that keeping physically active is helpful for people living with dementia. Yeah, absolutely. Anything that's good for your heart is also good for your brain. So keeping physically active is great for your overall health and well-being, um, but also for giving you a focus and providing some structure to your day. So physical activity has been proven to promote feel-good hormones and support better emotional health, as well as promoting good physical and brain health. Terrific. So what other types of activities are recommended for brain health or for maintaining my health? Our research has shown that music, art and creative therapies can provide huge benefits to people living with cognitive impairment. So music can not only lift our moods, but it can prompt memory, be a tool for engaging with others and provide an activity to focus on. So creative outlets such as art and craft can stimulate different parts of the brain and promote good emotional health outcomes, whilst also giving you a focus or a sense of achievement and purpose in seeing the outcome um, of your time spent on that activity. I guess that's why we see so many of those type of activities in social support groups, um, specifically for people with dementia. Mm. So Elizabeth, how do I resource myself with the best information about what's appropriate for supporting me and my family after a diagnosis of dementia has been made? Yeah, so things like a carer support group or a support group for people living with dementia, as Sarah and I, we've, we've, sort of, we've both touched on um, earlier in these sessions, 
being with others who are going through a similar diagnosis or experience can promote feelings of connection, which is really important. Uh, receiving a diagnosis of dementia can be quite isolating and lonely. So support groups can be a great source of information, referral to services, as well as an opportunity to vent, share ideas, um, and also advocating for change or developing new programs. Sounds terrific. Um, so some of the key points, I guess, that, um, that we've touched on or you've touched on, Elizabeth, is that dementia doesn't change who you are. A diagnosis doesn't change you from one moment to the next. Mm. Um, it is possible to li still live well with dementia. Yeah. Um, it's important to remain active and engaged, uh, part of your community. Talking about dementia is important to reduce some of that stigma around um, having the disease um, and using empathy instead of sympathy mm. when supporting someone with dementia is, is quite important. Doing things with the person, not for the person. Um, and if you're not happy with treatments or supports, speaking up, asking questions, going somewhere else, choosing another provider. I think that's a really important point Mm. Uh, to make that if you're not happy with the care you're the customer um, you can choose who provides that service to you yeah absolutely and I think another thing um, it's worth mentioning is a big part of what we do as service providers is helping to resource family carers and informal supports and sort of the network around the person with the diagnosis so if we can help um, resource and provide strategies and to sustain a family carer in their caring role that obviously means a, a better and more sustainable outcome for everybody yep 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 did anyone have any questions for for Elizabeth or for myself about caring for yourself about um caring either as a carer or a person living with a, a diagnosis of diagnosis? <laughs> I've got one Sarah yeah um <laughs> As a carer, what do I do if I'm absolutely burnt out? You know, I'm at the end of my patience in my caring role. So there is always an expectation, I think, for carers that they have to do this role. And something I like to say to all carers is you have a choice here. You don't have to do this role. There are others who will take it on. But if you're at the absolute end of your rope and can't cope, you can always, and we tell carers this, you can ring an ambulance. Um, you can actually say, I'm not coping, come and deal with this for me at the moment. Um, I guess a less drastic way would be ringing a, a family member, a child and saying, you know, come, I need help. But I think it's really important to ask for help from somewhere. Elizabeth, did you have anything to add to that? Yeah, I did. And I'm just Googling as we talk uh, the phone number for Dementia Support Australia. So that's a really fabulous service that offers a 24 hour helpline for anything to do with behaviour and dementia. So even if it is somebody hopping out of bed at two or three in the morning, getting dressed and ready to go to work, um, that's a behaviour that can be quite challenging for a family carer or a spouse to respond to and to try to coach the person back to bed or whatever it is that, you know, whatever outcome is desired there. So the 24 hour helpline that you can call in any situation at any time of day is 1800 699 799. And there are trained clinicians on the other end of that phone line who will help talk you through different strategies, um, provide a bit of emotional support to the family members and just try to work through and, and brainstorm how can we respond in an appropriate and respectful way without escalating the situation. Yeah. So, yeah, there are supports. But I think, again, I don't want to um, take away from the fact that it can be incredibly stressful, incredibly emotionally challenging and draining. But as Sarah said, I think, um, you know, people always have a choice in where they're at and what they're willing to, um, you know, the situation they're willing to stay in or not. And there are services and options um, around to help, you know, support carers and the person themselves with the diagnosis. So please just speak up, ask for help um, or contact us if it's, you know, something that's a bit more of a, an ongoing issue. We can potentially resource you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Welcome. Anybody else have any questions on this one? 
And as we mentioned, I guess, uh, last week, there are carer support services designed uh, specifically for this type of support. So some short-term funding in addition to what you already have on an ongoing basis that can help support a carer who's really burnt out, stressed, unwell, um, or their caring role is stretched pretty thin because they might have grandkids or children with their own health needs, mental health issues, whatever it is. Um, so there's a lot of government funded services that can help support the self-care of everybody in the situation as well. I had no idea that was available. Yeah. That, that aspect of it, yeah. And a lot of people don't, Julie, which is a shame. And I think um, it's tricky because we often all, even as service providers, we, are, we will look at the, the highest sort of the primary need of somebody. And so if you are linked in with a service like Caledonia, I imagine day respite is what everybody thinks you're there for. So you might not be asking for anything outside of that. Yeah. And Sarah might not be aware or, or her team of, you know, suggesting other services unless the conversation yeah. leads itself um, to yeah. highlight that need. Unless we speak up. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. But actually, it's an interesting um, time, I guess, to mention that Sarah and I often talk about collaborative programs, events, um, you know, community expos and trying to work together. So different organisations that provide different services. I think we as providers need to take some responsibility for promoting ourselves across different services so that even if you don't know that it's available, we can highlight that there are other types of supports if and when they might be needed. So we're always working on that one. <laughs> yeah, we awesome. are. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, this is a very prompt session then. If it is, isn't it? Um, yeah, I guess one other thing that just springs to mind, and Sarah and I were talking about this yesterday, um, are things like carer events or a retreat or a break or residential respite, the types of things that a lot of family carers aren't aware of, but in helping to sustain somebody in an informal caring role, there are services and funded supports available specific to the carers of a person living with dementia that we can put together that could be a weekend away with other family carers. Um, it could be even some time with the couple, say if it's a spouse, spousal relationship, so the person with a diagnosis might be married to their primary carer, the two of them could benefit from some time away with some other couples in the same situation. So there are a whole type of sort of a whole range of services mm -hmm. that offer, you know, again, that outside the box type of support that can just help you catch your breath and then come back to the day to day routine with a little bit more energy and, um, you know, enthusiasm, I guess. Yeah, I think for, that sounds amazing um, because I've, even though I find that sometimes I do need a break, I need respite, but this, as we mentioned on a previous session, um, there's nothing available for the, the stage that my husband's at. Mm -hmm. So that, that I hadn't, again, that's just, I had no idea that there was even anything that we could go to together that would still be a, a break for me and not, uh, yeah, that's amazing. And I think this is one of those things um, that Sarah and I, again, Sarah, I hope you don't mind me dropping you into this, <laughs> speaking for both of us, we talk a lot about um, uh, new ideas and new initiatives, but it's a tricky thing to promote sometimes because yeah. if, particularly if we're talking about people living with younger onset dementia, we probably need to engage more proactively with the NDIS or with the local area coordinators or support coordinators to really promote that we can provide a whole range of services. We do have some funding available, but we need to know where the needs are and we need to know how yeah. to advertise it so that we really do appeal to the types of people who are really needing that service, if that makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I think yeah. the marketing of these things, is some, it's a bit of an ongoing, um, not issue, but it's just something that we're, we're trying to figure out what the best way is of us trying to, you know, promote new ideas or a new yeah. type of couples retreat or respite program. Yeah, so it's great yeah. to hear from you too. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. 
yeah, we're working on it. We're, we reassure you that we're working on it. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And your ideas and suggestions, yeah, that's what will, will guide us. So it's great. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, if we don't, yeah, I'm realising more and more that if we don't speak up, uh, there's, it definitely won't be any change. Sometimes if we speak up and it's not possible, but other times by the sounds of it, mostly it would be possible. So, yeah, thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah. Um, Sarah, is there anything else that springs to mind for you or we'll just no. keep very no, short and sweet? Um, as long as people know where to reach out for, for assistance. Um, yeah. They don't have to remember what's everything that's available, but mm -hmm. just remembering one number to reach out to can probably put you in touch with whoever you need. Yeah. Great. Thank you very much, everybody, for coming along. Yes, thank you. Thank you. And we'll thank hope you. see you either tomorrow or next week for our final few yeah. sessions. Yeah. Thank you very much. Have a good thank day. You. Bye. 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 Bye.